to my channel if this is your first time of listening to me welcome to my channel welcome on board my name is abiola adefe but you can call me abiola by grace abby or abiola and with me today is a guest a friend of mine and i mean it's conversation episode so you can tell already so please welcome rosa to my channel welcome rosa. hi i'm so happy to be here thank you for having me um, <laughs> I mean, I mean, we ought to have done this like a while ago, but it's fine. It's true. Okay, <laughs> it's okay. We are doing it. Like that's good. That's the point. So, um, so today, Rosa is going to be telling us some things, some key things relating mm -hmm. to family. She's going to be talking about different things in respect to family. But first off, I want you to introduce yourself to us, Rosa, before we start. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Rosa. I am married to my amazing husband, Ken, and together we have three children. Um, yeah, we live in the lower mainland. We do a lot of things. So sometimes when I'm introducing myself, I'm like, okay, what do I talk about? So I am a business owner. I'm a realtor. Um, I also have an education background. I also am a teacher. So a lot of these days uh, I, I, that I've been doing is I've just been merging my business and my education into one and educating a lot of visible minorities on how they can become property owners. But I'm also a minister of the gospel. I lead worship and I preach. A worshiper well. like me. She's a worshiper. I'm a worshiper. Yes. Yes. So that's a little bit of me. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. So today, Rosa, you already know what we're talking about. We are talking about the ministry of marriage and motherhood. Mm -hmm. And I mean, first off, do you see these two as a ministry? Absolutely. I see them as a ministry. Why? Um, so oftentimes people find themselves in relationships and to them, the next logical step is to get married because it's like we've been together for a while. We adore each other. I think it's cool. You know, I think she's fine. And so the next thing is to just get married. But they forget the fact that marriage is an institution that was put in place by God. So the moment that you try to do what God ordained outside of God, you have what is called stress and um, what the Bible refers to as strife. Um, marriage is not supposed to be full of strength. That's, that was not God's intention. It's supposed to be a place where we work and we till our garden, but it's not supposed to be strife. But when we remove God from the institution of marriage, we lose sight of all the things that are pivotal and an important uh, and essential components to making marriage work. And one of those things is that marriage really is a ministry. I like to think of having children and um, being married as a garden. It's a new domain that God has given to you. And he expects you to do your part as a laborer with the Holy Spirit. Like Paul would say, I labor with, with the Spirit of God. I'm a co-laborer. So we labor with the Holy Spirit to help our garden and the soil be cultivated so that we can have beautiful trees and fruit and other people can actually be beneficiaries of our garden. Um, but again, outside of God, that's a lot of work. Yeah. 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 Thank you for stressing the point of outside of God, we can't really function. And that's why it's actually a ministry because we are supposed to uh, be extension of the person of God to the person you're married to. That's right. And see, yeah. we even to our children as well, right? Yes. Yes, absolutely. When we think of the word ministry, sometimes we get lost in that word because we think of like a big stage and standing on a platform and, you know, having all these accolades. Yeah. But that's not what ministry means. Min to minister to somebody means to be a help to them, essentially. And so when God calls you, you know, one of the first things he does is give you work. He gives you purpose. He tells you why he put you on this earth and what you're supposed to be doing. And part of what we do in our calling is we also, once we receive this gift of Christ, now we're able to be effective ministers to the world around us. Yes, and that's so the, in our marriage. That's in our marriage. So our primary place, when we're called to marriage, the institution of marriage, the primary place that we can express and see the expression of God in our lives, in our marriage, and then in our homes, our children, and then through the larger um, 
the larger community. Thank you so much for that. So as a fellow believer, a fellow worshiper, a fellow child of God, a fellow lover of Jesus, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, what are the strategies that have helped you, you know, in this journey, in this ministry called motherhood and marriage, marriage motherhood? Mm -hmm. What are the strategies for a young woman there who is about getting married or who just got married or who just became a mom? What are the strategies they can learn from Rosa that they can pick? So mm -hmm. I think that when I thought about this question, one of the things that um, I, as I reflected back on my own life, what has been so, so important for me is number one, mentorship. So you need a Naomi to your Ruth. You need a David to your Jonathan. You need somebody who can walk alongside with you and kind of help you understand this new journey. Because unfortunately, there's a lot of books written out there. And I also advise write, reading. That's one of my tips. But um, there's a lot of books out there. But those authors, they're not in direct contact with you and your life. They're not able to actually be able to pick apart your life and use the different points as lessons. So I would, my first piece of advice is find a mentor. Mm. Find somebody who's been down that road, who is willing to journey with you. Mm. Someone who you can actually open your life up to. Sometimes we're afraid of being hurt, so we don't allow people in. But that is actually a strategy of the enemy to keep you from living to the, the journey of abundance that God has created for you to live. And when I say abundance, I don't necessarily mean wealth. I mean that even in people, people, there's an abundance that we can have in the richness of our relationships. Mm -hmm. Your relationship is supposed to be rich. It's supposed to be a place where you can actually relax and have respite and have peace and experience the joy of the Lord. But you can do that on your own. I mean, you can, but it'll take you twice as long. So if you can find somebody that you can journey alongside with, you cut your time down, right down. You know, the lessons that they said experience is the best teacher. Someone has already been through and experienced all those things. So why would you want me to go and put yourself through that? That's the first thing I would say. The second thing I would say is find community. Um, for me personally, I'm a, you know, I, I, I adore my community. I'm part of a church. And right now we're part, I'm part of a church plant. So I'm leading in my community. And I find that every time that we gather and I have conversation, I'm amazed at how God can use somebody to minister to me, even though the conversations that I've had is just between me and him. Sometimes the conversations are just in my head. And yet, you know, I'll be talking to someone and the very things that I've been speaking to God about comes through this person. In other words, someone becomes an open door for me, a resolution center for me. And you can't get that when you're on your own. Motherhood is a very lonely journey. And if you do not have people around you, someone who you can pick up the call, phone and call, somewhere where you can go and see other humans, other than the people that you are, you are mothering, it's easy to slip into depression. And so those are the two things. And then the third thing, I would say is to read as much as you can. Um, when you have children, that's really difficult to do. So the thing that I've gotten into lately is podcasts. I listen to a lot of podcasts, especially on the things that I want to grow in. So when I became a new mom, oh my goodness, no, sorry. When I became pregnant, I started listening to, pre to pregnancy podcasts like crazy. What is it like to give birth? What do I need to know about giving birth? What are all the different terms that the doctor's gonna be spitting at me that I'm expected to know and understand? Um, what is labor like? Every stage of your life that you're going through, someone has already been there. Yeah. So watch a YouTube video, watch Abby's channel, learn something. Don't just be swallowed in the abyss of your life because God has so much more for you, you know? Um, so that's my advice. That's what I look back on and what has really carried me through and helped me to be very successful in those areas. Wow, those are key points. And I love how you actually stressed the um, point on knowledge, getting the knowledge. And that's what I'm all about. Like, yeah, 
there are certain things that we need to unlearn to learn new ways and yeah. we learn 100 percent have to learn mm -hmm. learning has to learning is continuous like knowledge Absolutely. is continuous so just grab on knowledge yeah thank you so much for stressing on that thank you you're welcome uh, my third question is under the umbrella of motherhood you know um how have you been able to walk this walk without losing it losing your mind you know how like you said motherhood is is a lonely journey yeah so how do you find the balance you know in being yourself you know in being yourself before being a wife before being a mother you know how mm -hmm. how do you find the balance in you know how do you strike the balance um it is difficult i my children are older now um even when I say older, they're not like grown. My oldest yeah. is about to turn six. My next one is four and my next one is three. Um, but I remember when they were babies, like little, I recall having my first child. Um, no, I recall having my second child and being pregnant with my third. And my second child was still breastfeeding. And there was a period of time where I thought that that was the most difficult period of my life ever. ever. I've passed through other periods that have been more difficult than that. But for a long time, that was the most difficult period of my life. Um, having a belly and actually taking my child to work um, because he was too young, I thought, to go to daycare and then being pregnant, being so tired and having to work. What has really helped me now, I'm in a different phase of my life now, but what has helped me these days is I time block. And I feel that if I had known that then, um, or earlier, I should say, that would have really helped. I use an app, it's called Time Block, T-I-M-E-B-L-O-C. And what I do is I sit down at the beginning of my week and I make sure that I schedule time for myself. I date myself. There's no husband, there are no kids. I just spend time with me and I take time to recharge and refuel myself. Um, when I had my really, like when my kids were like newborns and little, I tried to do that as well. And sometimes that was less scheduled because their feeding schedules are all over the place. And I also had lots of conversation with my partner, my spouse about, hey, when you come home from work, I need like an hour to myself so he was so good as soon as he walks in the door he's like give me the kids go for a drive don't call me don't text me just go and then I was able to kind of have my sanity I recognize that's not everyone's situation some people are single mothers some people don't, don't have the luxury of doing that so I would say get your kids on a routine whereby they're in bed at a certain time so that you still have that time to do you whatever that is. If that's like watching a television show, if that's listening to a podcast, putting on some lo-fi music and just like taking a bath, whatever your thing is, you need that. Because the thing about you is that you are well and people are going to continue to draw from you. So if you don't have a place where you can draw from and be refilled and refueled, you'll find yourself running empty. And when you're running empty, that's when people snap and they do stupid things. So you never, it is God's intention for you to take care of yourself. You need to water yourself. You're like a tree that needs to be nourished, that needs to be watered, that needs to be treasured. One of the things that I've done recently is I'm like, I'm giving myself a pedicure once a month. That's what I'm doing for myself. For some people, they're like, that's not enough. For me and my busy life right now, that's all that I need. That hour, that's good for me. Yeah. And that's just something I do for myself. So what I'm trying to get at is self-care is important. I know that word is thrown around so much. Right? I don't like to use it because now it just means so many other things. But when I say self-care, I just mean taking time to just be with yourself, be alone with God even, and just pause. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And that is why it is a ministry, right? Because you can't give of yourself by yourself. That's right. Like you said, you're, you have a place where you're drawing from. So if we lose the time of, you know, being in touch with our source, yes. then we dry up. And it, it just reminds me of, you know, um, there's the anointing within you. There's yeah. the anointing upon you. 
Yeah. So the anointing within you is for you. You can't yeah. have people draw from that. So when the one that is upon you has been drained, mm -hmm. go back to get refreshed. That's right. For you to be able to minister. And this yeah. cuts across different areas. Like you said, we minister mm -hmm. to everybody. You know, so I just hope people have been able to pick from that. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I think like one of the things that comes to me, Abby, is that um, oftentimes in the Old Testament, women were found by wells, you know, mm -hmm. um, and even Eve's name, right, means life giver. So there's something that God has put on us as women where it's natural for us natural. to want to give. Even the way our bodies are formed, right? Wow. It's natural for us to give and it's natural for us to also receive. And if we don't have that ebb and flow, we become burnt out and we become exhausted and then we become bitter and that's not God's will for us. Yeah. So we got to find a way to balance that oil and just make sure that it's continually being filled. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Are there any last words? Maybe if there, if there's anything, any aspect of this particular ministry that we didn't really cover that you would like to share? Yeah, a couple of things. The first thing is that when you are new to being married, it's very important that you remember that you are doing what my mom calls weaving, leaving, and leaving, weaving, and cleaving. It's important that you leave. You need to leave behind some of the things that you thought were essential to who you are. You will find that they're not. Some of the things that you thought or you may have believed were to be part and parcel of your personality. God is going to use that other person to actually shape you. And so marriage is a ministry and the fact that every time that God puts us in community with other people, we are never the same. We are always impacted, either positively or negatively. But it's like we're ions. So we're constantly taking and giving from each other. And God's purpose for you in your marriage is that you become more like him by the time that you meet him again. You are not supposed to leave it feeling like, oh my gosh, my life is perfect. Everything is great. I'm awesome. My husband's awesome. We're traveling around the world. You thought marriage is going to be about and you learn to like weave, weaving something new. And it's going to ebb and flow. It's going to change as life changes. You change on a day-to-day -day basis, let alone your spouse who changes as well. I thought I liked the color purple. Now I hate it. Five years later, I don't like it anymore. Please stop buying me purple dresses or whatever it is. You learn to weave and change with change. And the most successful marriages know how to change with change. Um, children are not a hindrance to whatever it is God has called you to do. So there's also this idea that like, if I have kids, I won't be able to afford my house. If I have kids, I won't be able to afford having this lavish lifestyle that I've always wanted. I want to travel. I want to do all of these things. Children are not a hindrance to that. Children are actually supposed to be a part of whatever God is calling you to do. Because of this idea, a lot of us are having babies a lot later mm. and we're less likely to commit. Um, statistics are showing that people are not getting married at the rate that they were 50 years ago. Mm. People are not committing to relationships at the rate that they were 50 years ago. And people are also not having children at the rate that they were 50 years ago. We actually in Canada cannot support the replacement of our own population. That is why the, the government is immigrating 400,000 new immigrants into Canada, because we cannot support our replacing ourselves because we're not having, we're not getting married anymore and we're not having children. And part of the reason we're not getting married and we're not having children is because we have these lofty ideas of like what a spouse is supposed to be. He must be six feet tall. He must make six figures and he must have a six pack, the six, six, six. And if he doesn't make those things, then we're in trouble. And unfortunately, it has changed the way that we understand what partnership and the journey of life and marriage is supposed to be about. So now we're getting married later because we're waiting for that. And then as we get older, we realize that's not there. So then the reality begins to set in and we're like, okay, I guess I'll just marry whoever's available. But now you're older and it's becoming more difficult to have children in our older age. 
And so it's personally, I believe that it's part of deception in our society yeah. that makes us believe these things so that the enemy can have his way and we're not procreating and we're not filling the earth and we're not subduing it. We can't. So I just all, I know I've said a lot, but I want us to also change the way that we understand family and the way that we understand um, having children and that God actually brings these gifts into our lives so that we too can have a way of being humbled beforehand, being shaped, being molded. The person I was before I had children, I had no idea. I didn't know anything about life. I thought I knew. I really thought I did. And I thought, I just said, okay, I've got my career. I've got my this. I had no idea. My children. Oh, oh they're some of my greatest teachers. Hmm. Now, I think if there's anything you leave our conversation with today, it's that when God calls you to something, he entrusts you to that thing. And sometimes it doesn't come in the shape or the form that we expect, but that doesn't mean that it's not God. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Like I love, I love the direction at which you're ending this because it takes me back to, there was a time I shared on my page that, you know, people were uh, condemning. I don't know if you know Minister Mercy Chinwo. Yes. Yes. So, so, you know, she, um, she posted on her page that husband got her a car and, you know, she was so excited about it. And then there were people condemning her for posting it on social media. Like, and I'm like, but if, if you have people coming to say, my husband beat me, my husband did this, you're ready to actually push such messages. Oh yes. So when people come to share the good things about marriage, please yeah. do them. Let them do that because you don't know the, the person that's going to watch that and be like, wow, there are actually mm -hmm. good men out there. There are wonderful yes. men out there. There are wonderful marriages out there. Yes. But I don't have a problem with people sharing. Like this is even a time and season to share. The enemy is using social media for his own agenda. Oh, yeah. Let the Lord use us. Yes. Some agenda on social media. Yes. So please, let's promote positivity, you know, promote love, relation. This is yes. why we're here. Yes, this is why we're here. Thank you. You're welcome. I think there's a lot of, of late, a lot of people um, are number one, either jumping into relationships for the wrong reasons, or they're not going into relationships because they're scared of being hurt and they're scared of the ramifications. And they don't understand that in the journey of faith, there's always going to be something that you are going to have to confront. Yeah. And your fear may rise up. But that is why God calls you to step out in faith above fear. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're in a place where God is speaking to you and you're able to hear his voice, don't be afraid to take that step. And whatever the journey is, whether it's motherhood, whether it's finding a spouse, whether it's the job, the career that you've always wanted to, whatever it is, I'm also speaking to myself because I know it's really scary. Yeah. But take that step so that you don't know the generations after you that are going to be impacted by your obedience of faith yeah. and so we just have to do the next thing that god is calling us to yeah and that is why it's called the journey of faith it is called faith because mm -hmm. it's the journey of faith literally like yeah it's, it's, it's the journey of faith yeah so thank you thank you so and it takes us back to what you said so this isn't even just for men for women alone this is also for men for girls for boys for women, that mm -hmm. it all starts from you know having that thing with that place with god you know going back to god it starts from the place of god and then then you can shine in whatever area you need to minister in you you know embracing who is called you to be that's so great. thank you so much for having this conversation with me, Rose. I really enjoyed it. What about you? Did you enjoy it? Oh, I had a great time, Abby. You're welcome. Anytime. Uh, Please reach out to me Thank again. you so much. Thank you so much. So thank you for joining us today on You're this welcome. episode. I hope you all benefited from this. I did myself. I did, honestly. It's, it's actually so good you know discussing things like this because it brings out the best in you you know it opens you up to the things the new things to try the new things the new ways the new possibilities there is with you know in this journey of faith because we don't know it all like you like you said we don't know it all we keep growing 
and that's the purpose of this channel we keep progressing so okay. thank you so much once again i know i already appreciated you before but mm. i'm just so joyful like my spirit is so high and elevated yes. right now so, thank you so much <laughs> thanks to everybody for staying to the very end and i hope to see you on my next episode by god's grace till then keep progressing and stay blessed bye bye mm -hmm.